Old Trapper Beef Jerky. A good one in the Big East tonight as the 15th-ranked Providence Friars visit St. John's. A look at the starting lineups tonight. And for Providence, A.J. Reeves is back in the starting lineup. He came off the bench in Sunday's win against Marquette. His return. Officials tonight, Mike Roberts, Tony Chiazza, and Paul Sells. These two teams met in Rhode Island on January 8th. Providence won by 10, and we're ready to go. The rematch from Queens, and St. John's controls the opening tip. And you'll see this Providence team is as tough a team as Ed Cooley's had. He's had a bunch of them, mostly men, but they'll play about 15% zone, like to mix it up, but they are really tough defensively. First shot attempt goes to Julian Champagny, and that's exactly what St. John's is looking for. I mean, he's 16 for his last 57, his last four game. This guy's been as good an offensive player for the last three years as anybody in this league. Noah Horkler with the answer for the Friars. Boy, with this guy has been the transfer from North Florida, their leading three-point shooter. He's the modern-day foreman. He can rebound, but he steps out and shoots threes. 42% from beyond the arc this season for Horkler. Aaron Wheeler making his third straight start for Mike Anderson. His pass gets deflected. St. John's maintains possession. Champagny again, and this time it's Al Durham with the board. You know, with St. John's, the more you see them in the half court, the worse it is for that. They want to get it up and down as fast as they can. They average 10 steals a game. That's what they're looking to do. Turnover by Justin Minaya. Providence had 18 turnovers in the first meeting between these two. Mathis tied up. Good, uh, Rusu rather tied up. Good defense down low. Now Champagny on the attack. He shot off the mark, and Durham comes away with it again. Durham trying to go coast to coast with the left hand. This guy, Durham, what he has brought to this team, I mean, basically he was a three-year starter at Indiana, so let's just say that he was a good player there. But he shot, he's not shooting the ball well, 25% from three, but he can take it to the hole. One of the most fouled guys in America. Pasha Alexander's first shot attempt is no good, and Nate Watson's there for the rebound. Durham is number 10 in the nation in free throws per game. He averages seven foul shots a game, taking the ball to the hole. And he's not really a point guard. Their real point guard comes off the bench, Biden. Here's A.J. Reeves. Poked away by Posh. Montez Mathis goes to the floor. Hands off to Alexander for two. Now, that was a rare situation where Al Durham really didn't go after that loose ball the way he you would have expected him to. He should have gotten that one first. Watson over Soriano. It won't go. High octane starts to this one. A cutting Alexander. They're at their best, pushing the ball as best they can. That's why they got to get stops and defensive rebounds. And that has been a little bit of a struggle when they haven't turned people over. St. John's has lost three of its last four. The lone win impressive on the road at Seton Hall. Late night tip and the fans are juiced up here at Tarnaseca Arena. Durham lost it. And it's St. John's basketball. Well, you're going to see St. John's here. Look at Now, Durham should have gotten that ball. There's no doubt about it. He was actually there first, and Posh is able to finish that pass. Just Al Durham again falls asleep on that cut there, and they get an easy basket. That's not like Al Durham that we've seen all year. Three early turnovers for the Friars. Wheeler's three won't go. And that's a bad sign. I mean, this team forces 17 a game. They scored 19 points a game off turnovers. Durham's three off the mark, tipped around and secured by Soriano. St. John's will push. Mathis in transition. And Mathis had it swatted out by Minaya. Early on, Steve, this is not a game that Providence wants to be in. No, this thing is up and down, helter-skelter. That is exactly how Mike Anderson wants the game played. He'll play ten guys. They want to press. They want to make you play fast. The less half-court that's in the game, the better St. John's likes it.
Third season for Mike Anderson at St. John's. 2-0 against Providence in this building. And that matters. We spoke to Ed Cooley about playing here at Carneseca, and he said, look, when the schedule comes out, I look at Villanova and St. John's. Are we playing on campus or in the big arenas? And with St. John's, it's the Garden. They'd much rather play at the Garden if you're the opponent. And when I coached and the schedule came out, I felt like I was pulling an inside straight for the poker play. I would look at the schedule, and I'd do it my thumb slowly to see if we were playing in Madison Square Garden or in here. Yeah, you don't want to play in here. Tough I only place play, to win. I only play here once and we did win. We won. And every, every, every other game was in the garden. Yeah, I think Ed Cooley's hoping they're at the garden next year. Although we'll find out more after this game. But St. John's did beat Providence twice last season as Bynum has entered. And Reeves. His three won't go. Tipped around and controlled by Mathis. Mathis to a day Wusu. No. And the follow by Soriano is not there. And they are no doubt bigger than the parts on their team. He has done a stupendous job being 18 and 2. And one of the keys Cooley told us yesterday was transition defense. That has not looked good so far in this one as the pace of this game favors St. John's early. And now interesting Providence tries the zone early, which is not bad. St. John's not a great three-point shooting team, and it slows them down a little bit. Mathis gets the bounce, and the Red Storm go up by three. Full court pressure from St. John's. And you know that pressure, I can tell you, Andrew, in this building, it looks just so much tight. There's not much room under the baskets. It's not like Madison Square Garden in here. You get that tight feeling, and when you play a team that presses, it can be really tough. Providence in a scoreless drought for over three minutes now. Horkler trying to change that and he can. Five points early for Noah Horkler. You know when you're 18 and 2, you got a lot of good things going and he's one of them. Noah Horkler's been leading rebounder in the league. Best three point shooter. And let's say hello to John Rothstein. Well, Andrew, it's been obviously a dream season so far for Ed Cooley in Providence. One of the main reasons why winning close games in games this season that are decided by five points or less, Providence is 7-0, and Andrew. Hey, John, he told us that, look, we're not a flashy group, but we're really tough. And the way that they play down the stretch of games, you look at Sunday against Marquette and last week against Xavier, they're as tough as anybody in Cooley. It's a good catch. Nice catch. But you know what? I, I told that Cooley before the game, and I, I look at the stats. If I didn't know your record, I'd look at the stats and say, guess what their this team's record is? I'd say, I don't know, 10 and 8, 11 and 7? Right. Doesn't look like no 18 and 2 team, I can tell you that. But here's the thing about them. In the last three minutes, they're an 18 and 2 team, and that's what matters. He told us that for those late game situations, they have so many plays, it looks like a menu at Cheesecake Factory, and they execute that menu to perfection. That's the key, Andrew. They executed. A lot of people have it. You got to execute. Find him on the drive. Finds a cutting Manaya, and he's tied up by Wheeler. But a foul is called on Aaron Wheeler. Here's a look at the tournament resume for Providence on this first day of February. 10 and 0 in games decided by single digits. You see their number 30 in the net and in the AP poll this week, ranked number 15. Yeah, I mean, the metrics aren't what you would think. I mean, I mean, I think like Jerry Palm is projecting them right now as a two seed. Usually, don't two seed see two seeds with a 30 net. So for some reason, the metrics aren't there, but the wins, and who they think got five quad one wins on top of it. So it's not like their wins are against anybody. Only two losses on a neutral floor against Virginia. And then a game at Marquette where they just got the doors blown off by 32. And Ed Cooley said he did not even watch a second of that tape. It was just one of those nights. You know, I know we talk about a lot of people. Bruce Pearl, one of the best coaches, obviously, he's got a coach shot for the coach of the year. The guy who doesn't get talked about for some reason is Ed Cooley. And he's got as good a chance to be coach of the year with this team as any. I mean, he doesn't have Jabari Smith. He doesn't have Walker Kessler. He doesn't have those guys. But this is a heck of a team. He should absolutely be in the mix as Posh Alexander cans it too. And Alexander with the steal, and then he throws it off of Bynum. That is what Posh Alexander brings to the table. 
Yeah, I mean, he can wreak havoc on a game all by himself. I mean, he was cold defensive player of the year last year and freshman of the year. That's only happened three other times. Allen Iverson, Patrick Ewing, and Alonzo Mourning. Ironically, three Georgetown guys. He's the only other guy that was freshman of the year and defensive player of the year. Mike Anderson calls him a one-man press, and this is exactly why. Talk about a guy perfect in Mike Anderson's style. And Bynum got drilled in the face as well. So a tough go there for Jared Bynum. But they Wusu for three. No. Rebound Stanley. His putback won't go. Tipped around to Bynum. Providence does not have numbers. Bynum, Lob, Watson. No. Alexander, no look pass, and it's a turnover. That was a careless play by Posh Alexander. That three is good for Bynum and some emotion from the Providence Junior. 33% three points here. How about the three that he made against Xavier two games ago? How about they win? Xavier's one of the toughest places to play in the country. They win that game with Nate Watson not scoring. I would have thought before the game that's impossible to happen. Steph Smith drills a three. The Vermont transfer shooting 33% from deep. Big time scorer from Vermont. And Breed lays it in, and that is exactly what Ed Cooley wants his team to do. After you break the press, attack it. He feels there's a hole in the St. John's defense there. You know, St. John's doesn't have a shot blocker this year. And one of the things I can tell you when you play them, if you're able to handle the pressure, you can get some easy baskets if you attack without turning it over. They just leave Bynum alone there, wide open, and then in transition, Breed with the finish. Attack, you have to attack pressure, because the worst thing you can do, if you're tentative against pressure, you're gonna get destroyed. You must be aggressive against pressure, but aggressive smart. Providence foul was on Horkler, first team foul for the Friars, who are 8-1 in the Big East for the first time in program history. That shot won't go for Smith, and some contact underneath and a foul is called on St. John's. Great box out by Allen Breed that time. Omar Stanley whistled for the foul. Foul number four, Omar Stanley. St. John's is 9-0 in this gym this season. Only one of those nine games came in Big East play. That was against DePaul in early January. One thing about it, Cooley, he plays eight guys. Anaya's three rolls around and out. Into the corner, it's deflected out by Bynum. Let's check in with John. Well, guys, you've been talking about Providence down the stretch in the final minutes. Part of that, the experience of this team. Providence's top eight scorers, guys, have a combined age of 22.4 years old. Pretty impressive in today's day and age in college basketball. Yeah, I mean, you play eight guys. They got four graduates and two seniors. Makes a huge difference, no doubt about it. And we're talking about Benaya, four-year starter in South Carolina. George, four-year starter. Watson, four-year starter. These guys have played a lot of ball. Soriano doesn't get the bounce, and it goes out of bounds. Game moving up and down. He's as good as you're going to find. Alexander getting a breather on the bench. As Tariq Coburn has checked in for St. John's, the transfer from Hofstra. Now Bynum will set up the Providence offense, averaging 69 points per game, which is only ninth in the Big East. They do it with defense. And defensive rebounding, which is what you have to do to finish off a play. Manaya cut, and he got held. And that foul's going to go on Coburn. Bounce on number 10, Tariq Coburn, and his first, James Perry. 
Check in with John. Well, Andrew, a quick update. Julian Champagny got hit above his eye. He's getting stitched up right now. He will return, but right now getting some stitches right above his eye, Andrew, but he will return to this game, according to the trainer. All right, John, thank you. Champagny hit the first shot of the game. And now trying to get back out there with 11 and a half to go in the first half. St. John's in a little bit of a zone now. That's where you got to get the ball against that zone. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Manaya from the free throw line. That is great offense. Manaya took, oh, what a block. Close. And they're going to call goaltend. That time, Manaya not getting back fast enough, had his head turned, lost the ball, got thrown over his head, almost recovered with a great play there. So count the bucket for St. John's. <laughs> Providence four and one in true road games this year. The one loss at Marquette, 13 and 0 at home for the Friars, and that place the dunk was rocking on Sunday against Marquette when they stopped the Eagles' seven-game win streak. Tynum chucks up a long three, and he hits wow. with the shot clock down. You know one thing about him, he makes a lot of shots late in the shot clock. He had a couple against Marquette also. Really good with his ball in his hands when the when the clock's under four. Steph Smith cannot answer. And now Ed Cooley says, let's slow it down just a little bit. Get this pace back in our favor. Now Bynum on the drive, trying to split the D and knocked out. It'll stay with Providence. Friar started two of six from the floor, but since then they've made five of their last seven. Mathis re enters for St. John, still waiting on Champagny to get back out there. I'll tell you one thing I didn't realize, Andrew, when you watch tape, I didn't realize how big Manaya is. He's pretty tall. I mean, a very versatile defender. He can guard like every position. He's listed at 6'7. He looks, and he looks long, too. Durham shot goes out. Ed, Ed Cooley said that in the offseason, they were looking for a guy, 6'6, 6'7, who could defend the other team's best player. And they seem to have found him in Justin Manaya. He told me he's PJ Tucker. P.J. Tucker's having a pretty good career because he can guard in the NBA and do a lot of different things. This kid's an eight-point scorer for his career. But when you score eight points a game and you start it for four years, that tells you something about what he does on the floor for that coach. He's the reigning Big East Player of the Week. Bynum had it poked away. Tried to maintain it. Lost it out of bounds to St. John's. Fifth turnover by the Friars. Providence averages just under 12 turnovers per game. And that 18 against St. John's in the first game, that's something they got to keep down. St. John's also taking a lot more shots in this game. That was just sloppy ball handling by Wheeler. Steal by Manaya and the jam! Just in time for Justin Manaya. See, now St. John's, a little bit of a half-court situation. This is where they've had their issues. Mathis for two. Not an easy shot. There's Manaya again come crashing in, and Durham brings it up the floor. Durham all the way to the hoop, and he is fouled. How about Justin Manaya making a play? Boy, he just comes out of nowhere and makes that steal, and then with a the nice finish, he's just, he's one of those guys you want to have on your team, and he's He's been 36% for three on the season, so he can shoot the ball a little bit, too. And he is the son of former New York Mets general manager Omar Manaya. And there is Omar in attendance today. See, I think he knows the area. Yeah. A couple exits away from uh, 
What is it called now? I, know, I knew when it was Shea Stadium. The city Field. That's the City Field. Thank you. Yes. When I, Justin, grew up in New Jersey, so a short ride for his father Omar coming back to Queens. And he's enjoying seeing Providence go on a 10-2 run. This zone has really helped Providence. Good move there, driving the basket. Montez Mathis with the lay-in. Providence by five. Horkler cuts to the hoop, lobs it up for Croswell, who lays it in. Croswell looks like a different guy this year. He was coming off the bench for them last year. He's been really valuable to the Friars this year. He's lost about 20 pounds in the offseason, and he said it looks like a different player. Offensive foul called against St. John's. This zone has been very effective so far. You don't want to start anything, guys. Yeah, Joel Soriano, who committed the foul, and then there were some words exchanged after. That's the second on Soriano. Great pass there by Noah Harkler. Boy, this team is just, you can see how connected they are. The chemistry, you know, there is nothing more important in any sport, and the chemistry is important in every sport, but not more important than in basketball, where there's five guys that have to play with one ball or guard one ball. Chemistry is the key thing in successful basketball. And Providence is proving how much it's worth this year. I mean, you said, you look at their stats, they don't jump out at you, but they are connected, they are close, they are tough, and they're 18 and 2. They're 18 and 2, and I don't know if they have a pro. And I'm not knocking the kids. Maybe they do, but there's no surefire pro on this team, and they're 18 and 2 in this league. Eight minutes to go in the first half. 15th ranked Providence trying to run its record at 19 and 2. I think it really speaks to how good a coach that guy is on the sideline. Shot clock down to two. Bynum puts up another one. Off the front of the rim, and the rebound to Adewusu. Mathis cuts in a tough spot. Iwi to the hoop. Counted and won! And a wonderful partnership this year with the Big East and the Black Fives Foundation. There you see Julian Champagny. He has returned, as John Rothstein told us. He got cut above his right eye. He's taped up, and he's back out there. And they stay in the pressure on the missed free throw. They've had seven lead changes so far tonight. Shot clock down to seven. Durham will put up a three. And Champagny returns with the rebound. And he was a 38% career shooter at Indiana, but he's shooting 25% from three for Providence this year. You're laughing because Coach Cooley was joking that it's making his shooting percentage go down. <laughs> but Durham has been a key part of this team as a day Wusu hits from deep. 7-0 run for St. John's. Probably the second best three-point shooter on St. John's. Oh, what a spin by Watson, and he is fouled. Well, Mike Anderson said that Watson was a big factor in the first meeting between these two, and Ed Cooley was telling us before the game, the game plan is let's feed Watson. We haven't seen too much of that yet. No, not at all. I mean, he was 9 for 11 in the first game, and they certainly had a big advantage there. But they, they've been taking advantage of St. John's trying to trap him and get going, take him to the basket and get some easier ones. So they haven't really set up a lot in the half court to throw it in there. Watson remains scoreless so far tonight. You know, I just got a text from one of my province media friends saying that Justin Anaya, he's the best defender in the Big East. Apparently, uh, Providence has a stat that his man for the year is shooting 27% from the field. Now, I, that's not my research. That's coming from Providence, guy. I don't know if it's true, but I do believe it. Well, he guards the... Other team's best player every night. And if that guy's shooting 27% on the season, that's pretty good defense. And they Wusu again. Not this time. Offensive rebound, Mathis. Let's see Champagny. As a day Wusu drives in. Wild shot, no. See, that's, he gets it back. That's the bad thing about the zone. You don't rebound the ball nearly as well. Shot clock at five. 
Ade Rusu. Yes! With the shot clock at one. And we are tied at 25. Corkler for three. Corkler was waving for that ball for at least three or four seconds. He had 19 last year against St. John's and 13 rebounds in the first meeting this season. Champagne deep three, not an air ball. Champagne had a 6'8 guy all over him in his face. They lost Russo. He went behind. Adai Russo went behind them. You turn your head, you lose him. But Horkler was open for a long time there. Horkler averages just under two three pointers made per game, and he already has two here in the first half. Champagne kicked it with 5.19 to go. St. John's losing at Villanova on Saturday. They went four of 21 from deep. And so far tonight, they're four out of nine against Providence. They already have the same amount of threes they made on Saturday here in the first half tonight. And one of the areas where they have struggled this year is defending the three-point line. They're at the bottom of the league in that regard. Obviously, Villanova can take advantage of that better than anybody. But so are the Friars a little bit today, too. Horkler misfires, and Ade Rusu brings it up. Now we've seen a lot of minutes here in the first half. Tough pass. Alexander is fouled. That's going to go on Justin Minaya, his first. You know, considering that St. John's only has two points off turnovers in this game, they average 19, which is number 19 in the nation in points off turnovers per game. Only have two points off turnovers so far in this game. Champagne, his three won't go. Still struggling, and Durham clears. Up ahead to Reeves. Reeves, transition three. Watson fighting for it. Nywe brings it down. That was a good strong rebound by Nywe. Good box out. He only averages nine minutes per game. But yeah, they've been, they've been yeah. playing him a little more lately. Alexander, yes. And again, that wasn't in the half court. That was kind of a semi-transition. You're kind of just shooting it quick. Nice floater by Posh Alexander. Alexander has eight points, but Mathis is called for the foul. You take a look at Posh here. They just let him get into the lane. Really, that was Benaya. That's the seventh team foul on St. John, so Providence will shoot one and one. No surprise, it's Al Durham at the line. As we told you earlier, he averages seven free throw attempts per game. Knocks home the first. He also makes 82% of them, which is pretty good. Fifth best in the Big East this year. Nywee gets a nice hand as he exits. You know, Champagne, though, he had like... I believe it was 40 games in double figures before he hit the stretch yes. here where he just has really struggled. And high expectations on him entering the year. And of course, the questions come up. Are you pressing? Are you thinking about the NBA draft? And he said, look, my main concern is just to get out of this right now. I'm not thinking about the future as twin brothers with Toronto in the NBA right now. I think after all the tape you've been able to watch from St. John's, if you're one of their opponents, I think you figured out if Champagne doesn't score, they have trouble winning. And I think that everybody's loading up on him big time, and that's what he's got to learn to deal with to St. John's. Other than him and Posh Alexander, they have been not able to find consistent offense. And we asked Mike Anderson about Champagne's struggles, and he said, look, we got to get him out of this. Scorers do go through this. And Anderson made the point that He's a target this year. To your point, Steve, I mean, other teams are keen on him more than they did a year ago. But you would think that he'll get well in this environment. You know, if he's going to get well, this is the perfect night to do it in this crowd at home on this floor. Yeah, on this floor in early January, he had 34 against DePaul. That's what they're looking for. 
They like this isolation on the free throw line there for Manaya. And Manaya is called for the foul, his second. Well, early on in this game, Steve, offensive rebounds heavily tilted in favor of St. John's. 9-2 to two on the offensive glass, and because of that, St. John's has attempted 12 more field goals than the Friars. They took 20 more than the Friars in the first game and lost by 10. That's almost hard to do, yeah. but the free throws, Providence had 18 more free, made free throws in that game than St. John's. Final 320 of the first half. Coburn for three. Tough shot. And the rebound to Reeves. And I like that Ed Cooley get Manaya out of there. You don't want this guy who's a great defender. You want to keep his aggressiveness in the second half. You don't want him picking up his third. Crosswell inside. Over Wheeler. It goes. Good move. Ed Croswell, the senior from Philadelphia. Five-point Friars advantage. Alexander step back three. Forkler tips it. Reeves had it. And out of bounds to the Friars. And now there's some discussion. Mike Anderson thought it was last touched by Providence. And he's going to win his case. St. John's ball, 2.37 to go. And this zone is, in the half court, has made life a little difficult for them. Alexander, and he traveled. You know, they're really mixing it up well. They showed zone that time. After the first pass, they went man to man. They get St. John standing around, thinking it's a zone. Pretty good defense by the Friars. Durham brings it across. That partiality can make you work on every dribble. Ooh, that almost had it. Reeves for three. Yes. A.J. Reeves. And it's his 7-0 run for the Friars. They've been kind of waiting for this kid to shoot the ball better and better every year. And he's always never been quite there. But this year, pretty good percentage at 37%. He's been a much more consistent shooter. And a timeout is called. We'll be back in. Park Alexander gave him a little foot fake, lost him a little bit inside, and he's tall enough to be able to shoot over Park Alexander if he's not all over him. Ed Cooley said, if we're going to be the team we want to be, we need AJ to be playing well. Missed five games with the pinky injury, trying to get back in the flow. Speaking of flow, impressive there from Posh Alexander. Yeah, showed some great athleticism, strong to the basket that time. He's in double figures for the 17th time this year. He's got 10 points. Let's check in with John. Well, Andrew, Posh Alexander, as you mentioned already, 10 points, a very good sign for St. John's in the last two years when he hits double figures. The Red Storm are 21 and 8. And good nugget there as Croswell answers. Largest lead of the night for the Friars. Stand yes, I'm not cut in position right now. I'm, I'm right by the same. Final minute here at Carnesecca. This year, when leading at the half, Providence is 15 and 0. I haven't missed a shot. That's what they've done. And you know what? I, I'll tell you one thing I'm seeing, Andrew. I think it's very difficult for St. John's to win a game with Julian Champagny doesn't get going. Posh Alexander is doing what he needs to do, but they've got to have that second guy. He's usually the number one guy. So far tonight, Champagny, one of five for just two points. Find him. And it's controlled 
Ayade Wusu quickly up ahead to Alexander. Alexander, nifty pass to Champagny. You know, they were taking a chance that they could have run the clock down for the end of the half, but they had the transition. They took advantage of it. Shot clock's turned off. And Providence can hold for the final shot. They will. Oh, and a steal. Ayade Wusu is fouled by Bynum. Oh no, it's two shots. It's two on the shots. Shot. Yeah, two shots in the ball. And Cooley really fired up on that Providence sideline. Well, he thought Durham got fouled. He thought Wusu fouled him when he stole the ball. And that kind of what led to all this stuff here. And then Wusu misses the first free throw. St. John's at the line in this first half is now 0 for 4. They are unfortunately one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country. In Big East games, they shoot just 60 percent. As Dewusu makes the second, it's a five-point game with six seconds left, and it is St. John's basketball. And you're right, Ed Cooley does appear to be pleading his case that he thinks Durham should have been fouled, or Dewusu should have been called for the foul when Durham had the ball near midcourt. Yeah, he thought he should be shooting the one and yeah. one. Instead, it goes the other way, flagrant one. They keep the ball. They make a three here. Ed Cooley would really be upset. Six seconds left. Bad pass. And a kick the ball. And they Russo to inbound again. Rolls it into Champagne. He couldn't get a handle on it. That was a big mistake. Bynum with two seconds. Bynum is oh. fouled. Shooting the three. That's an even bigger mistake. I'll tell you what. Talk about Butcher in the last 15 seconds of a half. My goodness. All over the place. That is. Posh Alexander is called for the foul. And Bynum will shoot three with .8 seconds left. Oh, my goodness. You turn it over. You got six seconds. You got a leak in the last shot. So there's only a five-point game. You turn it over, and then you foul a three-point shooter from not only not only three, but a heave. You think about the two inbounds. The one was kicked, and then the second one, they turned it over. They both look shaky. The first one looked shaky, as we said. Yeah. We're sitting here. That was, that was a huge, that was a bad turnover by St. John in the basket. Find them to 77% free throw shooter. And he makes all three. And you know, Andrew, they were up eight when all that started. <laughs> now they're still up eight. For now. For still now. Point eight left. Yeah, true. Let's see if how the half ends. Watson has entered to try to defend the inbound. And that will do it. And that's the end of the first half. So a frantic. And the big thing, they've got ten offensive rebounds, I should say. And they only have five second chance points. That really hurts. They're getting on the offensive glass, but they're not getting anything out of it. Providence ball to start the second half as they try to win their sixth game in a row. Rolled into Watson. Did not have a field goal in the first half. Nowhere to go. Back out to Reeves. Reeves, that's a long two, and it won't go. And Manaya comes in for the offensive board. Swatted by Soriano. Reeves gets it back, and he's fouled. Boy, Nate Watson really struggling, just not comfortable. The footwork that he showed, he's lucky he didn't travel, but look at this Providence team. Eight guys played in the first half, eight guys scored. If you told me Watson's going to have one point and they're going to be up eight, but you know what? They can win without him. He's not even having a great year, and this is the best team that he's been on while he's been in Providence. Foul is on Aaron Wheeler. That's his second. It sends Reeves to the free throw line where he's 80% on the year. And this is now the largest lead for Providence. Up by nine. Breyer is one of five Big East teams ranked in the top 25. And a whistle away from the ball, and it's going to go against St. John's and Joel Soriano. That's his third.
Soriano also had foul trouble in the first meeting between these two. Oh, now they've changed the foul to Champagny. That's his first. Walker nearly lost it. Now Reeves in the corner. His three hits the bottom of the net, but not in a good way for Providence. Pretty good transition defense that time by Providence. Mathis inside. No. Gets his own miss. Back up. Counted in one. Montez Mathis. That was all about toughness, and Montez Mathis is a tough kid. He just hangs in there. And this is a really good finish in a lot of traffic. Second foul on Horkler and Mathis with a chance at a three-point play. Transfer from Rutgers. Went to the NCAA tournament last year, averaging eight points per game for Rutgers. And Horkler with the rebound. Yeah, their free throw shooting really. 65% as a team for the season. That is last in the Big East. Alexander pokes it away. Durham recovers. Now Manaya for three. Alexander pushes up ahead. Alexander to Wheeler in the corner. Yes! He has played very well in the Big East games, Aaron Wheeler, the transfer from Purdue. Averaging just under 12 points per game in league contests, and it's five points in a row for St. John's. Can Watson get going? There it is, finally, his first field goal of the night. Good footwork there, little fadeaway. That stops the five-hole run, two minutes into the second half. Let's see if Champagny now can answer on the other end. Tough fadeaways, no good. Offensive rebound, St. John's. Wheeler back up and in. Manaya brings it across. Reeves left alone for three. Watson the offensive wow. board and he's fouled. So Watson coming on life a little bit here early in the second half. You're going to see Watson wheeling and dealing in the low post. A little fadeaway over Soriano. And on the other end, Aaron Wheeler really giving them a big lift for St. John's. Shows how old I'm getting. I almost coached his dad, Billy Wheeler, <laughs> who was at Manhattan the year before I got there in 1988. I was wondering about that. Yeah, you were. I he, figured you were. He's in the Manhattan College Hall of Fame. Scored close to 1,300 points in two years. He was high school teammates with Mark Jackson. Yeah, Bishop Lachlan. They were state champs. You know, it's our first game together of the year, so I didn't want to go at you. Right <laughs> I, yeah, I could give you a chance, huh? <laughs> Alexander lays it in. That wasn't good transition defense that time. You got to always stop the ball. That time they let Posh Alexander just keep going. A dozen for Posh. 45-41. Pressure from St. John's. Here comes Durham. And St. John's gets back. Watson. Off oh, balance shot. No good. And Cooley asking for a foul there. Alexander left alone, comes up short, follows oh. his miss, and a foul. Posh is everywhere. He really is. <laughs> you got to stop the ball in transition. They didn't stop the ball there. That was not good transition defense. And then here, look at this offensive rebound. Yeah, that's, that's a foul. First foul on Nate Watson. Posh has six field goals and six assists tonight. Well, you can see the numbers not pretty at the line for St. John's. Now two for seven. Jared Bynum re-enters for Providence. And a two-point game. 
you know, St. John's has hung around, hung around, but they've got to get a stop to get a chance to get back into the lead. Here come the fans at Karnaseka. Horkler for three. Watson, the offensive board. Put back is there. Well, you got to put a body on him and get him out of there. He was way too deep on that. Six points now for Nate Watson. Haas going right back to work. Down low. Horkler comes over for the block. Yeah, looking to post up find him that time, Pasha Alexander. But he got a little help from Horkler. Champetti. Hosh over oh, all of it. it. Sure is. Yeah, you can see that he had that one in his eye. To shoot. Bynum tried to lob it for Watson. Knocked away. Here comes Posh the other way. The lob to Wheeler. And we are tied in Queens. Yeah, I like I, I like a timeout. Now I know the media timeout is here, but I would call one now anyway. A 15-5 run for St. John's. And this is as loud as we've heard it tonight. Four to shoot. Watson turn around, and he is fouled by Soriano. And Mike Anderson's going to let him catch his breath as he has been the man here to start the second half. Nate Watson at the line for the Friars. Well, you know, the thing about him, Andrew, is he just plays so hard, too, on both ends. I mean, he's giving you everything he's got on both sides of the ball every second. Watson makes a pair, and Providence leads by two. Now, Providence going back to that zone that was pretty effective in the first half. Kind of a matchup. When you see guys pointing all over the place and trying to guard a man, it's more of a matchup than a straight zone. Now they got St. John standing around, which is why they want them to do this. Wheeler catch and shoot is good. He's feeling it here in the second. Absolutely, but they threw that one to the right spot there, which is that elbow, and Wheeler made him pay. Let's see if the Friars go back to Watson. He has scored the last seven points for Providence. Naya in the corner. Durham baseline. Nice move, and we've got a wedgie. And let's bring in John. Possession arrow favors St. John's. Well, guys, we're seeing Aaron Wheeler make a big difference here. Of all the newcomers on St. John's roster, this was the guy that drew rave reviews in the spring and the summer in terms of being a fit for Mike Anderson's high-octane system. You can see why in this high-octane system, he's such a fit with his build left. Oh, no doubt about it. And the thing is, he had struggled so much early in the season. But these last five, six games, he's been their second-best player, actually, with Champagne not playing that well. Howie with the flush. And St. John's has its first lead since it was 13-12. to Horkler for three. Providence right back on top. Wheeler for three. And it goes over the backboard. End-to-end -end action here at Carnesecca. Great pass. Uh, Nightwe has really given them a heck of a lift, but not a good job defensively by Manaya, letting Adai Wusu get by him. Now Watson's kind of caught in no man's land. They get a slam. 
Anaya struggling to get it in. Poked away by Wheeler. Champagny gives it right back. And Ed Cooley saying, let's slow down. One point game as we approach 13 minutes to play. Crosswell inside. Three St. John's defenders around him and he still scores. Well, he's finished a couple in the lane in this game where there's been a lot of guys around him. He's been able to do it. Problems back in the zone. Got to try and attack that elbow area like we did last possession. Nywe lost it. Turnover by St. John's. Anaya open in the corner. Biden couldn't get it to him. Instead, Horkler. Another three! Noah's Arcade! An 8 0 run for the Friars. Boy, this kid is confident. Transfer from North Florida. Timeout, St. What they have done during that run. A couple of threes, including the last one by Horkler. Who now has 14 points on the night? And let me tell you something. The shots that he's made, Andrew, you could tell he knew he was going to shoot those before he even caught them. Still very quiet for Julian Champagny. He's got the ball here from the wing, and he still can't get it to go. And that was a really good look. He's forced a couple trying to get going. That was a great look. And Penny is two for eight tonight and still scoreless here in the second half. Borklers had the hot hand. Five on the shot clock. Bynum to the hoop. And a tough shot. Tough play. Jared Bynum. But they Wusu to a cutting Champagny and off glass his first field goal of the second half. Well, you got to be ready against them. You score a layup and they coming down right at you on a made basket. Oh, that's a foul. Bynum lost it at midcourt, stepped out. That's a foul. And it's a 59-53 Providence advantage. And you know, Andrew, they're number 21 in the nation, Providence, is a free throw attempts a game. Again, 14 for 17 in this game. And St. John's 3 for 8. So this is kind of a repeat of what happened the first time around. Just shooting way more free throws than St. John's is. But that's what they do game in and game out to their opponents. Champagny straight away 3. And it won't go. Manaya had it. Lost it out of bounds to Providence. And that's a shot that we've seen Champagny make, you know, for the two years before this pretty regularly. Reeves back on the floor for the Friars. It's always a good idea to let somebody bring up the ball who Posh Alexander's not guarding. <laughs> it's Steph Smith on Durham. That's a foul. And it's called. That's a foul. That's number three, Steph Smith, his first team's foul. And that's the fifth team foul against St. John's just inside 11 minutes to go in the second half. You know, we used to play against Georgetown with John Thompson. They played a very aggressive pressing man-to-man. -man. I used to tell the rest before the game, listen, you don't have to call 100 fouls. They're going to foul us 100 times. Just call 20. I'll take 20. <laughs> Let's check in with John. Just a note here, obviously, Julian Champagny trying to get going offensively. He is now, after that miss, four of his last 27 from three-point range, Andrew. And we're talking about a career 38% three-point shooter. Stanley down low, nowhere to go. And he turns it over to Reeves. Reeves trying to race up ahead. And Dewusu poked it free. Posh Alexander. Yes, sir. Oh, they call it technical. Yeah. Wow, they do for hanging on the rim. Yeah, he did a chin-up. That's a good call. You know, you can hang on the rim if, if you're worried about somebody running under you to protect yourself, but you can't do a chin-up. As soon as he did it, I said, well, that's a te I'm thinking to myself, that's a technical foul. And here's the problem. The problem is he did a chin-up. That's what, there's the problem. Not, that's a technical foul. That is clearly a technical foul. And you can see Mike Anderson was pointing to his head. As Durham makes the free throw. You can not You can hang to protect yourself, but you can't do a chin-up.
I mean, I know the fans don't like it, but that's about as easy a call as you can make. Alexander now with 18 points. His career high is 23. Providence has hit 60 on the scoreboard when they've scored 60 or more this year. They are 17 and 0. the midway point of the second half. Okay, it's always good to have a guy that you can throw the ball into at the low post and can score in these kind of situations. Watson's turnaround, missed it, but St. John's could not secure it. And it'll go right back to Providence. Shot clock does not reset, so there's seven to shoot for the Friars. Lobbed it into Watson, makes the catch, and there's the jam. Really nice out of bounds play. And Watson now in double figures with 10 points. And they've kind of, they've liked this, that now. They've lost Sam Penny that time. Easy deuce for number two. You know, when you play that zone or any zone, the back line's got to look for guys cutting behind them. Your head's got to be on a swivel, always looking around. Durham on the wing. Dribbles back up to the top with eight to shoot. Bynum with two on the shot clock. Bynum has to force up a three. And he hits it. He's the huge two. And then a turnover by St. John's. That was a great out of bounds play. Lob for Nate Watson. And then Jared Bynum, boy, he's been big in this game. He has 14 points, and he's 3 of 4 from deep. He's been big all year. He missed a couple of games early on, and last year was hurt a little bit. Yeah, missed four games this year with an ankle injury. But Providence feeling it right now. They've made seven of their last eight shots. Durham can't add to that total. Champagne with the rebound. Wusu drives in, back out Posh from the free throw line. He's, he's been in full play attack mode this entire game. He's got 20 points, third time this year. He's hit the 20 That's point mark and a foul on a Wusu. Let's check in with John Rothstein. Well, Andrew, you guys have been talking up Jared Bynum, and for good reason. He's somebody who just hasn't been healthy for Providence the last couple of years. But when he has, he's made a big difference. In games that Jared Bynum has played in the last two seasons, Providence's record is 24-9, and nine, Andrew. Yeah. They, they, they love him coming off the bench as well, John. And you look at him last year, he shot 12% from deep. But he entered today 33%, and he's 3 of 4 uh, from deep tonight. Oh, he started his career probably like 1 for 25 yeah. or something from the three-point line. Soriano the rebound. Champagny. Eight minutes to go. Alexander, he's been automatic tonight. They fell asleep. Watson up ahead. Nice move. Lost it going up. No foul. Manaya able to grab it. Four point game. Durham off the side of the backboard. Gets it right back. Missed it. Watson offensive rebound. Count it and one. Well, he's starting to. Providence is getting close to having to, like, try to face guard him and keep the ball out of his hands because he's got that look, and every time he goes up for a shot now, he's starting to feel like it's going in. Watson trying to finish off the three point play. 68 61. In the first half, Watson had one point and was 0 of 2 from the floor. 
Here in the second half, he has 12 points, and he's four out of five. You better get ready to help now on this kid. Cam Penny, and a foul is called on Bynum. Size advantage there. Sam Penny listed at 6'8, Bynum 5'10. And that's his first foul. Seven minutes to play. St. John's down by seven. Wheeler, corner three. Cook it. He has been good tonight. He's got 14 points. He's really picked up the slack for Champagne. Now if they can get Champagne going with those other two, they got something. Ninth assist for Posh Alexander and a turnover by Providence. And a, and a great denial there by Wheeler. We see Posh here. Hawkley gives too much help. And Wheeler's been knocking him down, especially in the Big East games. Wheeler double figures in seven of his last eight, and you see how much better St. John's has been. More efficient here in the second half. Give it up here. Bynum, three on two. Watson. Fans wanted to travel. They don't get it as Watson converts. You know, I wasn't crazy about that pass because you threw it back to the big guy who had to gather himself, but Nate Watson got it done. Alexander on the attack. Hands off. Wheeler over Noah. And the foul. What a great pass by Posh Alexander. Double double, 22 points, 10 assists for Posh Alexander. He's been the game, Posh Alexander. This kid's been good, don't get me wrong, Wheeler. 10 assists, and the free throw shooting is really three for nine. Those 10 assists for Alexander are a new career high. But you're right. A four-point game in St. John's has missed six free throws. With six minutes to go. And I able to hang on over to Horkler with five to shoot. Give it. Feed it to Nate. Got to go. That's a foul. Watson. Got fade away. Rolls around and out. And a foul is called on Horkler, going for the rebound. That's his third. Only five team fouls on Providence. That's one of the things about them. They don't foul much. Ed Cooley imploring his team to settle down, play defense. This is what we talked about in the first half. In crunch time this year, Providence has been composed, and they found ways to win. Can they keep their composure here in a hostile environment on the road? 7-0 in games decided by five or less. That tells a big story. Mathis for three. It's good! Just his 10th three of the year. And we've got a one-point game. They're going to turn it over. Anaya trying to call timeout. And a five-second violation is called. Ed Cooley is saying we got the timeout. No, I think Tony Chota had that right. That was a long time. St. John's has made seven shots in a row. And they can take the lead right here as we approach five minutes to play. I think it's a great time to try and get Champagne involved. Soriano, turnaround. No good. The follow and a foul. Guess who? Would it? He has been really, really good tonight. And Aaron Wheeler playing great in the second half. That is what's allowed them because Champagne still hasn't gotten going. And that's what has allowed put them in a position where another free throw. I didn't want to say anything, but three for ten. Second career double-double for Alexander. He also had one earlier this season against UConn. That was a heartbreaking game, too, overtime. And Posh has just 
tied the game and tied his career high with 23 points. Five minutes to go. Another tight one in the Big East. You got to think they're going to try to get it to Nate Watson. But look out for Al Durham because at the end of the game, he's been spectacular. Could not get that one to go. Manaya, the offensive rebound. Pulls it back out. Right back in at Wheeler. Manaya around Wheeler for two. Tough. And his dad, former Mets GM Omar Manaya, loves it. A fist bump as the Friars regain the lead. Wheeler, another corner three. Not this time. Hush! Oh! Are you kidding? Oh, my goodness. I mean, come on. He's got 25, a new career high. Well, you know, one of the stats I've never seen. I mean, you know, how many stat sheets have I seen over the years? A lot. He's sixth in the Big East in offensive rebound. A point guard. I have never seen that in my entire life. Watson, tough shot. Won't go. Alexander had it. And it'll stay. Remember, guys, in games this season, decided by five points or less, Providence 7-0, and Andrew. That's the best win percentage in the country, John. And Noah Horkler has returned to the floor with four fouls. Something to keep an eye on here down the stretch. Champagne had a tough time grabbing it. Now down low to Soriano. A cutting Alexander. St. John's up by two. Justin Manayev fell asleep. He turned his head and popped Alexander just beeline for the basket. Great job of moving without the ball. The guy's doing everything. He's doing it with the ball. He's doing it without the ball. Really good cut there by Ponch Alexander. 10-2 run for the Red Storm. Let's see about Durham's, who hasn't really done anything in this game, but in those last three minutes usually does a lot. Bynum from Brooklyn! Oh, oh my goodness. It's good! This guy here. 4-3 of the night for Bynum, and Providence back on top. 2.50 to play. Miscommunication there, and a turnover. Champagne cut to the hoop, Posh threw it behind him. Don't forget, 11-11 Eastern, Fresno State, and San Jose State will be available at cbssports.com slash cbssn. It's a pretty good time to get the ball into Nate Watson. You need a basket? Durham to a cutting Watson, and he is fouled. Just like you called for, Steve. Yeah, I mean, it's a real weapon to have in a close game, a big guy like that that you can go to. And for Joel Soriano, that is his fifth foul. So Soriano fouls out, did not score tonight, had five rebounds to go along with his five fouls. Well, Isaiah Nywe will come back in. He's played a lot tonight for Mike Anderson. I mean, he's athletic. And it's Watson at the free throw line. Five out of seven tonight. As a team, Providence shoots 73% from the charity stripe. That's fourth best in the Big East. Watson missed them both. Big misses there. You better keep your eye on Posh Alexander. Not only on the shot, but on the rebound. Off the big pass. Wheeler couldn't oh. get a hand on it, though. And that's the 15th turnover tonight by St. John's. Approaching two minutes to play at Carneseca Arena. Been a fun one here on CBS Sports Network. Well, that's foul. And it's called on Nywe. That's, that's really a bad foul. It sends Bynum to the free throw line for a one and one. 
And the shot clock was winding down in the bonus. Not a smart play by Isaiah Nywe. You know, they like to switch everything, and so he ended up on Bynum. Bynum makes the front end. He now has 18 points tonight, which matches his season high of 18 in the first meeting this year against St. John's. And now a new season high for Bynum. He's got 19 points. It is a three-point Providence advantage. Inside two minutes to play. And body to the ground. That's Manaya. Whistle away from the ball. KJ Theano, a St. John's grad, is in the truck. Steve Lapis, John Rothstein, our entire crew. I'm Andrew Catalan. And we thank you for joining us for what's been a good one here on CBS Sports Network. Out of the St. John's timeout. And Sick Profit staying in that zone. Oh, that's a bad pass. Bynum tipped it out. It'll stay with St. John's. Boy, Bynum's been everywhere in his own right, too. Red Storm have one timeout remaining. Providence with two. Coaches are telling there's 12 seconds on the shot clock. Nywe sets the screen too hard and a foul on Nywe. Yeah, he didn't give him any space. You got to give him at least a step. Knocking Bynum to the ground. You're going to see right here. Yeah, he gave him nothing. You got to, if he just stopped a half a step sooner, then it would have been a legal screen. Nywe will go to the bench. Remember, Soriano has fouled out. So they're going to play Wheeler at the five to defend Nate Watson. Final 90 seconds here from Queens. I'd be surprised if Nate Watson doesn't get a touch on this possession. They'll run it down as far as they can. Get started at 10, which is coming now. Oh, they clear the side for Al Durham. Durham, top shot, no, tipped high up in the air. Durham gets it back. Boy, Benaya, hold it, you gotta bring it out, bring it out. Oh, and Watson is fouled by Wheeler. I think you gotta bring that out. Mm. And kill another, you know, 16 to go. Try and kill another 10, 12 seconds. I, I don't think that was a good play. He's gonna shoot two free throws, but. I think now you need the 10 seconds more than the two free throws. You're right, though. Manaya made a great play great to play. keep that possession alive for Providence. And Watson hits the first free throw. And they ran the play was it was a clear out for Al Gould, who's really struggled in this game. But Manaya, like you said, is keeping it alive. Durham is one for ten with six points. That's what Ed Cooley told us. We may not have a surefire lottery pick, but on any given night, any one of our guys can beat you. A scramble on the floor, and a timeout has been granted to St. John's turnovers. There are also added timeouts after that last one with 61 seconds to play. Well, they got they don't necessarily they don't need a three. They're down two possessions in this game. Take it to the basket. That's kind of what they do best, this guy. Wheeler for three. High up in the air. Oh. It's grabbed by Horkler. Gets rid of it to Durham. Over to Bynum, and he brings it across. They don't have to foul. And Ed Cooley calls time. Now is if you're not going to foul, don't foul with like five seconds to go on the shot clock. That's the mistake you don't want to make. If you make a decision to foul, that's up to you. I would not foul in this situation. I'd play solid defense. But you've got to get this rebound or the game's going to be over. No foul. 15 to shoot. Now you don't want to foul for sure. Now you got to get a rebound. Mike Anderson's yelling foul. Oh, I, I don't understand this. What I don't understand is you had a timeout. So either you're going to foul. You know what I'm saying? Come out of a timeout.
how can they not know they're supposed to foul? Now, if they didn't want to foul, I could, I could have bought that strategy, no problem. You would have 20 seconds to go down four, but if you want to foul, you're coming out of a timeout, you've got to foul right away. Yeah, clearly a miscommunication <laughs> because the players were not fouling and Mike Anderson was yelling foul. I mean, why wait that long? Wasted time, and Durham makes the first free throw. You, you wasted another, you, you wasted 10 seconds on the clock, and then you fouled anyway. And you fouled the best free throw shooter on the team in Al Durham, who's fifth in the Big East at 82%. Yeah, that was not, that was not good. Makes them both a six-point Providence advantage. Now you're Providence, you just want to keep them in front of you, don't foul. Certainly don't foul a three-point shooter. Eight consecutive points for the Friars. Once again, finding ways to get it done down the stretch. Can they hold on? 20 seconds to go. Coburn forces a three and he hits. And they're going to take a look at that. a free timeout. They can set up their pressure now, down by three in 19 seconds on the clock. I mean, playing against them, especially the way they press, that really helped. It's Durham to inbound. Over to Manaya, who will now try to get it in. Back to Durham. Nicely done by the Friars. And there's the foul by Mathis. And you can do all that after a made basket. Not on obviously a, you know, a violation or something. But after a made basket, you can throw the ball on the baseline as many times as you want. It will be two shots for Providence. And again, they got you got they got the ball to Al Durham's hands, who's 82% from the free throw line. Ed Cooley told us before the game that, that he sees Al Durham as Mariano Rivera. He's the closer down the stretch. And he's trying to nail down the save here against St. John's. He's been that this year. And probably played great defense with Coleman with a heck of a shot. And by the way, that was Ed Cooley's words. I don't want Red Sox fans watching back <laughs> up in Providence to get upset that I said a Yankee. Yeah, right. That's right. what Ed Cooley said. Now you get him mad at him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he's 18 and 2. He can afford it. <laughs> Durham, Kansas. Five point game. You want, yeah, you want to make him not roll it. Dewusu for three. It's good with 13.7. St. John's does not have a timeout. Manaya gets it into Durham. We got a five. Yeah, and he holds it and killed a couple of seconds. It'll be Durham going right back to the free throw line. Give St. John's credit. They made two big time threes there to hang in there. Made Wusu now with 10 points on the night. Eight out of nine at the line tonight for the transfer from Indiana. The closer. Providence's last eight points have come at the line, and one more would make it a two-possession game. 24 out of 30. St. John's has made four. There it is, a four-point game as Durham makes them both. Find them back on the floor. Watson to the bench. I like them pushing up like this. Make them use time. Alexander with eight seconds left. He'll drive, and he lays it in. 4.8 on the clock. Portler quickly into Durham. There's the foul with 3.8 remaining. I give St. John's credit. They've done everything they're supposed to do in this last minute. Make a couple of threes, foul right away. They just had that messed up possession after the timeout where they didn't foul right away like Mike Anderson wanted them to. So Durham, one of 10 from the floor tonight and 10 out of 11 from the free throw line. Big one again. This guy. They give Codman's credit. Who's gotten the ball every time in the backcourt when they were going to get fouled? Durham. 
Friars last 10 points have come on free throws. Made them both. Four point game with 3.8 left. Now you just got enough foul. Alexander at midcourt. He'll chuck one up at the horn. No good. And the Friars do it again.